Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome, folks, to this powerful broadcast today. Uh, wow, we've got some incredible information. Guys, the trade war, the trade war, the trade war, we're past that. It's getting intense now. Matter of fact, we've got some information just come in. Deflation, falling exports have, have been seen now driving more. Matter of fact, the Bank of Korea is now cutting rates drastically. According to reports coming out of Seoul, South Korea, the, the South Korean recorded an annual fall in consumer prices for the first time in September, while exports shrank for a 10th consecutive month. Data showed Tuesday reinforcing the expectations of further policy e easing uh, from the central banks. Matter of fact, the consumer price index slid 0.4% in September from a year earlier. What does that mean? Statistically, Korea's data shows that just missing 0.3% fall tipped in a Reuters survey. It was the first time that South Korea has recorded a deflation on an annual basis since 1965. So this is getting very serious. We want to know what this means for world markets. Now I can just tell you our stock market lost 343 points or something like that right now. Um, gold is slipping, silver is slipping, all of this just in the last two, three weeks, we've been experiencing a little bit of the, uh, uh, you know, lack of stability. And if you're looking at the stock market right now, or just a few minutes ago, it was negative 343. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in an expert who truly knows what's going on, who's going to help us, who's, who's got a winning combination, even in this volatile world. He knows how to pick the right stocks and help people be able to trade accordingly and be very successful. That's Bob Kudla. Bob Kudla from TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Bob, great to have you on today. Hey, hey, Paul, thanks for having me. And uh, if, if everybody, I, I'm in a new office, so if I, uh, if I uh, look like I'm in an interrogation, I apologize in advance. <laughs> well, you look all right. I mean, you're going to be, <laughs> you look fine. Maybe you are in an interrogation. I mean, the whole situation, Bob, is getting to, it's getting a little precarious. I know Trump knows what he's doing, and, and he's, he's fighting a war, really. And it, it's a global war, it's a trade war. We've been way out of whack with China, especially for years. But now, is this starting to affect some of our allies? Yeah, yeah Paul, this, is, this goes actually way beyond the trade war. They're going to blame it on the trade war. They're going to blame it on the Fed. They're going to blame it on the crazy Democrats. But what's happening here is that, you know, for what well, we've been in, this is now, um, what, almost uh, 90 years since the last Great Depression, and we've, we've accumulated worldwide, I think, $246 trillion in debt. And we have countries like Korea and Japan and China and Germany that created these imbalances in the world economy. It's, 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 it's a society called mercantilism. And what that means is that everything's designed around exporting. They limit their consumers' ability to choose uh, how much free cash they have, and then they limit the ability of other countries to export their goods. And that's what caused the imbalance, which really caused us to have Trump, is because basically America was getting hollowed out. So Trump did the trade war, okay? And now what that's doing now is he's forcing balance into these economies. Well, they're ill-equipped to deal with it because, you know, when you don't give your people freedom and the leaders don't want to give up power, you end up with the situation where they're going to, that we're having right now. So China is ready to implode. And Korea gave the first, what I call the first sniff of deflation, of the first sniff of what I would call the Great Depression 2.0. Now, before everybody starts freaking out, I, I have a very big silver lining, and I don't mean that just because I'm gonna talk about silver, is that in, in the first Great Depression, America was China, in the sense that we ran current account surpluses, we ran trade surpluses, we ran budget surpluses, okay? now. When, when the, our export markets got cut off, America went into a 
deep depression. Well, the people that survived the Great Depression the best was Great Britain. Great Britain, in fact, parts of London real estate went up during the Great Depression because they were running a current account deficit, a trade deficit, and a budget deficit. And so when you start cutting off trade like we've been cutting off, is that actually our country is the recipient of that. And so you're gonna see around the world, uh, those countries that I just discussed are gonna be in a really, really deep funk. And I'm talking like Great Depression kind of funk. Where the United States is we're gonna get a fever and we're gonna not feel really good, but we're gonna be, at the end of the day, we're gonna be okay. And we're gonna be okay for a number of reasons is that number one is that we could produce all our own energy, Paul. We can produce all our own food. And for the most part, the things that we have to import are more political than have to. So we could create what's called our own pressure cooker. And, and that way we could fight our way through our debts and deficits. And what, what Trump is doing, he's recreating the, the United Kingdom great empire all over again but he's doing it under American leadership this time. So the English speaking countries, they call them the, the group of five. You have New Zealand, you have Australia, you have Great Britain, you have the United States and you have Canada. And then what I wanna to add to that is you're gonna, Mexico is gonna be part of that process. Uh, Japan will be part of that club. And I would wanna say pie towards the, uh, on the periphery, I would say Brazil will be invited as well. And that's going to be the block that's going to fight its way through this economic malaise. And those countries outside of that block, maybe India will be part of it as well, are going to be in, are going to be in deep weeds, Paul. Well, and so, the, go ahead. Well, my question would be, you bring up the UK now. You didn't mention anybody really out of the European Union. And, and do you see... I mean, look, isn't the president trying to bring UK into some kind of new NAFTA arrangement already on trade uh, and, and help pull them away out of that disaster called the European Union? He already said so. He said, once you leave uh, the European Union, we'll, we'll set up a bilateral trade deal with, with the United Kingdom. And so, look, they're, they're hard Brexit's happening, Paul. Yeah, so, it's going to happen. It's it's the union is, is is dead. You know, I talked about this a million times. You know, that place is iron and clay, and, and they're going to implode. And um, you know, the leftists and the progressives there, they made quite a bed for themselves. And it's going to be it's going to be an awful place to live in the next ten years. They look like they're trying to hold Boris Johnson hostage. They're almost saying, "You don't get to leave, and you're going to pay. If you do, you're paying thirty nine billion dollars and in a penalty." And he's saying, "Look, we can't pay the thirty nine billion. That's not going to happen. And we are leaving, and we have a place to land." But they're trying to lock down certain kinds of. Uh, deals that uh you know they're trying their best to injure them into not leaving even the, and now uh what's his name uh actually i saw david cameron come out of the woodwork yesterday i saw him last night on the news saying you know i think there should be another election and let's let the people decide whether they brexit or not i mean what is that look it's a deep state it's a deep state in the united kingdom and Europe to pres preserve this status quo. Look, United Kingdom is being being sucked dry by by Europe with this with this union. And as soon as they leave, look, Germany is in big trouble. Okay, so they'll forge a trade deal with the United Kingdom in a heartbeat because they export so much to the United Kingdom that, and that's the only country that matters in in Europe. Okay, the French are the ones that are screaming the most, and the Belgians. You know, and um, Belgium's the Belgians, and uh, and so the Germans are like, hey, they're keeping quiet because they know if if they hard Brexit this thing, all, all Boris has to say is that, hey, you know what, we're not going to trade with you. We'll cut a deal with the Americans. We'll take their cars, and so Germany's going to come on board really fast, and and it's, it's and it's over. You'll, and you'll see the Nordic bloc. The Dutch will come on board. It's just going to be the. Uh, the Francophile part of the world that's going to be uh, left hanging here. And because they're the ones that wanted this union in the first place to kind of control and contain Germany. 
and, and, and but it's not working for England anymore. It is amazing. You know, we have our deep state, we have their deep state. They're, everybody's trying to preserve this rotting carcass of European progressivism that that I think is going to suffer a mighty blow here in uh, over the next decade. Uh, folks, this is Bob Kudler with uh, TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Bob Kudler with TradeGeniusAcademy.com. The phone number there is 1-800-949-1408. That's 1-800-949-1408. He's running some Halloween specials here in the month of October. So you want to pick up the phone and call. You know, he's able to teach through his very unique program and algorithms some winning combinations to help people understand how to maneuver their way around this volatile world. I mean, the stock market's strong, Bob. I mean, it's strong. And even though we've got this massive trade deficit with China, we seem to, like you just said, we can grow our own food. We're the number one producers of oil now in the world. It doesn't matter that Saudi Arabia blew up. Their, their oil fields got blew up and they're being attacked every day by Iran through the Houthi rebels. It doesn't even matter if, if they turn off all of their oil wells. We can handle, we can grow our own food. We have our own energy. Really, uh, we're in pretty good shape economically, aren't we? Yeah, and you know the reason why the stock market went down today is because our manufacturers actually reported a, a you know basically a loss of growth. Look, you know the stock market is overvalued, Paul. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some some pullback in the market. The economy is still okay. I think right now what, what might, may tip things is that people start freaking out about the political environment. It, it has become toxic. Basically, you know, Trump's positioning this as as a coup attempt again on his presidency. So he's raising the, he's ratcheting it up. He's calling for, you know, uh, Adam Schiff to be arrested and prosecuted as a, tr as a traitor to the country. And, you know, and so at some point, you know, what people think this impeachment thing may actually happen, when I don't mean that he'll be impeached, i.e., you know, convicted and sent out of the presidency, but, you know, that it'll become a drama and, and I think that might, that's my only caveat on a go forward basis is that when this thing becomes less of a parlor trick and, and, and the Democrats really start to push hard on this thing and they get more and more weird, you know, like what's happening with Warren and, and with uh, Bernie Sanders, I mean, they basically want to take everybody's wealth away. It, then, 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 you know, kind of all bets are off because people will start getting scared and they'll start positioning for you know some some leaner time so that's the only thing that i worry about but from an economic structural standpoint as long as we have the status quo then our economy is just going to blast right through this and as other countries implode we'll just we'll just we'll circle into ourselves and and i'm a little bit i'm actually a little bit positive in the sense that after nancy pelosi kind of stepped on her own words here you know, basically saying I saw the memo before she saw the memo and the memo then was false. She started sending overtures to Trump saying, hey, let's work on drug prices. Let's work on on the, um, the, the new free trade agreement. So, you know, so I think cooler heads may prevail and try to rein in these hotheads that are sitting on the Judiciary Committee. Yeah, you know, Pelosi has really been very weak as the Speaker of the House. Uh, you know, she barely got this position back, and AOC basically trying to take over the Congress. Uh, this uh, whole, and then you got this Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff and and all the rest of that bunch that wants to do nothing but you know uh, investigate, investigate, investigate. Nobody over there wants to legislate. So the fact that Pelosi realizes that she's messed up by letting him call for the inquiry and realizing, man, this is really bad. We're trying to impeach the president over a phone call. Um, you know, whoever heard of such a thing, it is a joke. But I think that the Democrats and the House of Representatives 
are going to impeach the president. I think they just, they don't know what else to do. They have no other hand to play. It's going to backfire on him. I really believe that. Uh, he's not going to lose the presidency because the Senate would never touch him. But it's really ugly. I mean, you're, you're right, Bob. It's just so ugly. Folks, go to www.tradegeniusacademy.com. That's www.tradegeniusacademy.com. You can use the promo code Paul Begley. Get over there. Find out what's going on. Let Bob help you understand the market markets and understand how to trade and, and get you started if you've not if you already are a trader boy this is the guy with the expertise with a winning hand he's been winning uh more than you know at least just 60 70 percent of his trades are amazing and you've got charts to prove it so bob i mean really you're right i think this is whole ugly mess in washington i'm hoping that cooler heads do prevail i'm hoping that nancy says look enough's enough we got to get on with business let me ask you a question because um elizabeth warren threatened zuckerberg i mean zuckerberg had a private meeting and somebody leaked out what he said that if warren wins she's crazy she wants to try to completely break his company in half as well as amazon's and uh, google and she's there her and bernie and these guys are just threatening big business how can that be good for business to have these people <laughs> i mean this is getting insane isn't it yeah look i mean i just laugh because you know the social media companies have been been against us and they turn around and and who they're going to eat they're going to eat their own and um so maybe zuckerberg and and um these uh people that have been suppressing all these videos at google and at twitter and all this other stuff Maybe they're going to realize, hey, wait a minute, Trump's never been the enemy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the enemy is within. And think about this for a second. Let's say they get elected and they start trying to pull off these taxes or pull off these breakups. It's going to collapse the stock market. Yeah. You know, somebody came on and said, look, I'm a liberal. And if Warren gets elected or Sanders gets elected, the market's going to be limit down for weeks. That means 5% down every day for weeks as people try to get the heck out of the market and she's going to destroy every pension fund in the country including all the union pensions from all the states and the municipalities and utilities and the uh afl cio so i mean they, they just don't think past their own rhetoric and and you know trump's going to use that with glee going into the election basically saying yeah, vote for Warren. She's going to destroy your retirement. But go ahead, vote for her, you know, versus me trying to grow the economy for you. And I have a thought on this. I think Pelosi may have been working with Trump on this last thing, too. Basically set up her own her own left wing on this thing so they have egg on their face so she can just say, hey, look, you guys just pulled it. You overplayed your hand. We're moving on. And... Um, and, you know, if they go to a vote, people don't realize this, that the Judiciary Committee can't just say we're going to impeach you. They literally have to have a formal vote, Paul. And they have to have a crime in mind. OK, and you got to realize there's 27 Democrats that Trump carried in the 2016 election that are going to be that are going to be on the hook if they vote to go and to impeach. And so. You know, and then once that happens, the Senate won't even take it up. I mean, McConnell said, yeah, we'll take it up. He said, but we're under no time constraint. There's no requirement for the U.S. Senate to even take up the conviction. OK, they can just let the House impeachment just die or hang. And the other thing that people don't realize about an impeachment is Trump has full, full subpoena power to face his accusers. So that means this whistleblower no longer protected. Anybody that person that they said they had hearsay evidence of, guess what? Under oath, who were these people? You don't know. You heard things. You work with these people. Who did you work with? I mean, it would be painful. And Trump did it very cleverly. I think he set this thing up, too. That means he can subpoena everybody that was involved in the 2016 um, coup attempt against him. And he could drag all these people in. Wow. There's no way they're going to they're gonna want to do that because they're going to be under oath in public. They can't say, 
I plead the fifth. Okay, it would make a mockery, a mockery out of the proceedings. So you're saying, you know, so I just think eventually it'll, it's going to die, and if it doesn't die, it's just going to propel Trump into the into the election because the American people, are, if they're if they're one thing, they're fair. Folks, uh, Bob Kudla, Bob Kudla with us with TradeGeniusAcademy.com. You can always call there his office at one 949 1408. That's 1 800 949 1408. Go visit his website at www.tradegeniusacademy.com. You know what? If he started pulling the subpoena power out, I mean, here comes John Brenneman, bring in James Comey, bring in Andrew McCabe, bring in uh, Adam Schiff bring in the whole FISA whole the whole bunch involves Christopher Steele you got to bring in the Clintons you got to keep bringing them in I mean my lord have mercy it would be an ugly uh, real ugly uh, what about Peter Strzok and, and Lisa Page and who else was in these secret society meetings that Andrew had in his office they were talking about what Peter Strzok and I mean Comey and his higher loyalty I mean really you're right I mean this would be the uh, this would maybe just tear down the entire republic I mean this is so ugly how long can this game continue people watching us every day wondering what in the world's going on in the swamp we have a nation that is the most blessed country in the world with the greatest system and yet we got these idiots it seems like in washington that can't get out of the way i mean they're like swamp creatures it's like like reptilians of some sort so um the good news is Everybody just keeps getting up going to work, Bob. Everybody just keeps getting up going to work, and things just keep turning. I mean, is that America? Yeah, I mean, well, not the first part, but look, these people have been planning this for decades, Paul, decades. And they thought they had it with Clinton. They had everybody positioned, and and they were going to integrate us into the European model. Globalism, okay. globalism, and, and socialism. Climate change thing. So these people are livid. And what they're trying to do is that they can't impeach him. They want to damage him so much that they get Democrats back in there and then they'll just go right back to doing what they're doing. They literally will hire Comey back as FBI director. I mean, they will do that kind of stuff. And then, you know, then the Republic's in big trouble because then they could change America for good. Look, they don't want to have borders. They don't they don't want to follow rules of law. I mean, you know, then things could get real. But look, that's down the road. And, you know, in the meantime, nice to speculate on it, but, you know, you have to kind of be prepared. And, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing. You know, every time we have these little bumps in the road, gold, silver, platinum, palladium pop up like they did today. I shot you a chart. As soon as I saw those reports came out this morning, we turned around and bought platinum again, which is just an ETF that everybody could buy. And we've had four trades now on it. And, uh, you know, since the beginning of September, and we're, um, you know, we're up over 40% on it. Here's so these charts. Know, there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple quick trades. You know, you make a couple times a week, and uh, we can help people make, make good money. And there's always a bull market somewhere, Paul, no matter how dire things are. You, people make money. During the Great Depression, people made a lot of money buying uh, gold miners. Folks, and here's so some of these charts right now. We're showing these charts right now bob uh i mean you, you you're showing how gold and and you're showing how these charts uh just shot up with these trades yeah and one thing people have to keep in mind too is you know we had a big ipo that was going to come out called we work they had to cancel it and what? usually that's kind of a a warning sign that maybe the stock market has top paul so i don't want to be all you know sugar plums here you know, we could get a pretty good sell off in the markets because people have to adjust now to uh, valuations that aren't going to be as robust. And so the one chart I showed you, where I showed you the arrow down. That is the most vulnerable chart, that one in the NASDAQ, because they have many small companies in there that aren't profitable. And as they as the Fed continues to lower interest rates, bank stocks don't do very well. And as we get closer to the election, healthcare will be in the political crosshairs. And that small cap index, IWM, is mostly financials and, um, and healthcare stocks and many small stocks that aren't making any money. And they're all gonna get valued down, Paul. So there's ways in which people can make money. We're showing people how they did, could do that 
This week, we've been short that index, and we think that index is the most vulnerable, along with the financials, as the Fed will have to continue to cut rates here going into next year. The good news is if you have a home and you can refinance, you're going to be able to continue to refinance your uh, interest rate down. You may get historic lows. In Europe, people are getting mortgages that they're getting paid. Okay, so I mean, we're going to get to a point where we may get to zero rates at some point. That's how serious this can become. And that was good for the consumer, for the for the housing market or for the, uh, you know, for every the average citizen who could get the low, 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 low uh, interest rates on their on their mortgages. And but at the same time, it's not good for the banks. It's not good for those who have money because then they can't make any interest off their money. So it's, you know, again, you like you said, what goes up must come down. It's there's always a fluctuation when we're talking about these things. And uh, and like you said, you know. Uh, some of some of the uh, uh, groups in Washington would certainly like to pull us into a globalism. They'd like to get us and make us a, a so super socialistic society. We've heard. I, I can't believe that we have socialists now leading in the uh, polls on the on the left. But uh, Bernie Sanders and and Elizabeth Warren and and. Um, uh, Buddha judge is maybe not as much a socialist as he is uh, somewhere in the middle, but most of these folks over there uh, really are super socialist, almost leaning communist uh, mentality. But America, I think, will at the end of the day, will double take a double look look in the mirror and say wait a minute why do we want to take a chance on that things are going well enough i like what's going on i don't want my taxes to go up i want to keep my job and i think they're going to they're going to come to their senses at come time to go to the polls and bob tell people about your halloween special that you have coming up uh, all these specials for this month yeah, and I want to say harvest special because I don't believe in Halloween. But my my, <laughs> my, marketing, my marketing people, uh, uh, I asked them to change it, so I apologize for people on that. I could, people don't realize that that's just not a that's not a um, a safe word. You know that? Yeah, I don't like I mean, it either. You don't like it. I don't like it. I love harvest, but you yeah, have to tell they, the market. I just couldn't, I couldn't get it through. But uh, <laughs> but we're we're running specials to Saturday night. Uh, for, for your listeners, Paul, like we always do, we have some great bundles where people can get into the trading rooms, they can get trading, they get access to the trade signals. We even have software that have their algorithm showing buy and sell signals right on it. You can see in some of the charts that I, I, I put up there where people can, uh, we teach you how to use those, those signals when you see the, you know, the triangles and the diamonds and the circles and, uh, and it just helps you, uh, uh, first of all, learn how to trade. Number one and number two, give you confidence. And then number three, we, we you know, we spoon feed you some 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 deals too, so that you can uh, get on the right side of the trade. And so we work out very well. And uh, we, you know, we we don't promise people Lamborghinis, but we definitely going to help you make money nearly every day in the market. And we've been doing this a long time, Paul. And human nature doesn't change, and our algorithms are based on on that notion. And so we see the buying pressure, we see the selling pressure, and we just help people get on the right side of the trade. So tradelikeagenius.com or tradegeniusacademy.com, it will both get you there. And if you sign up before Saturday, you get some really, really good pricing so that we can help you make money and give you a good return on your investment with us. Now, you also t help people and when it comes to precious metals as well. I know that, that it uh, both gold and silver has slipped a little uh, here in just the last couple of weeks. Uh, is, there, is there any reason for that? Because we did see this thing start to rise. Is it because earlier in the fall there was some big selling going on? Some of the, some of the S&P companies, some of the blue chips were selling off some stock and was throwing it at precious metals, and now that's quieting down i don't know can you can you help us on this yeah so you know first of all perspective we, we we've had a big move from january into uh late spring then we had a big move from june into into last week and and what happens is you know people take profit number one and and, and number two is that gold is kind of like a a bit of an alarm clock and so everybody started cooing and purring that things are going to be okay again and and you know, hey, get back in the stock market. You don't need to be in precious metals. You know, the interest rates are too low, and and interest rates are kind of like a, a working opposition to gold and silver. As, as interest rates keep falling, it, it, it usually is a signal for people to get into gold. 
And when interest rates start to back up, it, it hurts gold and silver. And that's what happened. But if you notice, as soon as we had the next whiff of worry today, gold, silver, the miners all popped. Yeah. And, wow. and so that's what we're going to see more and more of. It's going to be a bit choppy. But once gold gets over 1600, it's going to new highs. Once silver, you know, gets back up to where it was just two weeks ago, it gets it's going to be over twenty, and then as the, as as the Fed keeps lowering interest rates, it's going to be Katie bar the door, gold, silver to miners, platinum, palladium, you know, the four precious metals are just going to rock it. So I tell people, look, we take profit on these things, we try to get in on the dips, and we always try to hold some position in them because at some point that's going to be the only game in town, Paul. Well, and right now it sounds like it's time to buy then is what you're saying because it has taken this little dip. This might be a time to jump in because if gold goes over 1600 an ounce, it'd be a good time to jump in now. And same thing with silver. So um, yeah, we're, in the third inning. we're in the third inning of this game right now. Folks, this is Bob Kudla, TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Again, you can call him on the phone also, 1-800-949-1408. That's 1-800-949-1408. Get in on these harvest specials that he's got going right now over at www.TradeGeniusAcademy.com. And you know what? It's a good time because uh, a lot of times, you, you know, if you get in in the fall of the year, things really turn the corner early on. And, and so this is a good time to learn. I'm, what I'm saying is to, to, to newcomers and some of you who maybe have never been in the uh, stock market, this is a good time to get in and learn and get some training and learn his algorithm system and his how he alerts you. It's time to buy. It's time to sell. And he gives you the pointers. This is a time to learn. So go over there. Check it out at Trade Genius Academy. Com. Bob, uh, what will happen if they come? How will you get them going? Yeah, so you just you just call in or you hit the chat or you email us. Once you sign up, you know we'll get you in the chat room, or uh, we take your your uh, the, the number for you to text, and uh, and then we do the rest. So uh, you can participate in the chat rooms if you want. If you want training, we schedule training with you. And if you want the software, we, you just give us your uh, username for. Uh, this software called Trading View, which is out there, it's free, and um, and then we would uh, put our indicators on there for you that you can use as long as yeah. you're a client. So um, the first step is just to contact us, and we'll walk you through the rest, and then we'll help you pick out the bundle that works best for you. You know, uh, it, it could be a small bundle, it could be a larger bundle, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And you know, we trade cryptocurrencies as well as we we trade gold, silver, and the and the stock market. So. Depending on where your interests lie, we think cryptocurrencies is still going to be a secular move, and um, and it's it's a place where people are going to bail out of the banking system. So we kind of got you covered when you want to bail out of the deep state or the banking state, and uh, and to be able to preserve wealth and in many cases to build it. Bob, we appreciate you coming on, being with us today. This is some great information, and again, you always give us hope. We need to trust in the Lord, folks, and let the Lord lead you in, in these decisions. And certainly, Trade Genius Academy can help you uh, give you all the information and the tools you need to be successful. Bob, thank you for coming on and being with us today. Hey, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Folks, we'll see you next time right here. God bless.